This session will be by a uh, very young uh, free software, open source or free software, there's a oh, distinction. Uh, free and open source. <laughs> uh, believer. His name is uh, Wu Hui Ren. So the, the talk is about changing the mindset of proprietary software users and the stereotypical idea of contributing to free and open source software. So uh, Hui Ren is a student at uh, Ninan Poly uh, studying IT. He is also a Fedora ambassador. So, okay, other people are coming in. Okay. So uh, all of you are just in time. So uh, I'll let him do his thing. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to see you at Force Asia today. Really great to see you guys at Force Asia today at Singapore Science Center. So the Singapore Science Center is a memorable place, actually. Uh, it's a memorable place for Harish and it's also a memorable place for me because I, when I was young, I was a kid, uh, my dad brought me here to the Singapore Science Center and I was a kid, I, I, I'm a very playful kid so I went to play hide and seek with my dad Yeah, so I got lost in the Singapore Science Center A lot of people got lost at the Singapore Science Center as well Yesterday, a lot of people got lost so I started crying in front of a stranger so I was like where is my dad so just at the moment when I started crying my dad appeared yeah so he has always been talking about this incident since then whenever the topic of science center is brought up so very cringy uh, very strong memory relation for me at the Singapore Science Center all right so my topic is about opening up yourself so i came out i changed the title a little bit now it's understanding open source but the main thing is still there is about open source software so a lot of us here are all open source advocates we know what open source is but do we truly know and understand what open source is do we really really understand the roots of open source all right so before i continue on you might be wondering who am I? What is this kid doing up here on the on here talking to you during Force Asia? So let me put it in very simple form. All right, so amazing slide emanation over there. So I'm a student studying at Nian Polytechnic. Yeah, so studying information technology. I'm a Fedora ambassador as well, uh, contributing to the Fedora project. And finally, I'm a developer as well. So just doing some full stack development, nothing much. So let's go on to the agenda for my talk. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is what is proprietary software? In order to understand what open source software is, we need to know what is proprietary software. Yeah, so, and why open source? Why open source? Next thing, choosing open source. And finally, the most important point, contributing to open source software a lot of us use open source software but the amount of people contributing to it very little yeah so give me a raise of hand if you use proprietary software just a raise of hand who uses proprietary software <laughs> yeah see a lot of us here uses proprietary software yeah as long as we have the slack software on our phone we are using proprietary software so I'm guilty of using proprietary software as well. Yeah, so I'm guilty of that. Even though I'm a Fedora ambassador, even though I come from Force Asia, I'm guilty of using proprietary software. So let me tell you <clears throat> what proprietary software really is. So right here, you got a picture of BMW. I cited the source down there. Okay, so it's a BMW car right here. Really nice, really cool. If you had the money, you would, uh, you would buy it. And okay, so Proprietary software essentially is that you can't open the hood of the BMW car. You can't open the hood of the BMW car. That is proprietary software. You can't open it up. You can't look at what is working underneath the layer. You don't know what's happening underneath the layer. And the thing is, you wouldn't buy this car anymore if you can't look under the hood. So you wouldn't really want to use proprietary software but uh, most of us still uses proprietary software anyway. So let me talk, let me switch a little bit to open source. So why users, why you, why you should use open source software? Why, what's so good about open source anyway? So open source software is the opposite of not being able to open the hood and looking underneath. Open source is about 
through knowledge, through knowledge, you can look underneath, you can see what is happening underneath the hood. You know what's happening, you know exactly what code is operating. You know what's going on, essentially. And next thing I want to bring up is that it gives you true security. It's not just any security. What do I mean by true security? Okay, so let me give you a really quick example. Community versus proprietary security auditors. So you have a very big group of security auditors, a big globe, red hatters, you've got red hatters, you've got Google people, all of them, they are part of this big giant community of security auditing. So open source software is out, the open source code is out there. So every single one of you, even you can look at the open source software, you can audit the code. So let's say there's, there's thousands of security auditors looking at the code versus a small group of proprietary software auditors. Which one do you think will do better job at finding out security issues? Which one do you think will resolve security issues faster? Obviously, it's a community. The community, there's so many people looking at it. There's so many professionals working full time just to look at open source and audit the open source code. So community security, it gives you true security. That's what I mean by true security. You can't get it in proprietary software. Proprietary software doesn't grant you that true security you need for enterprise software, for your personal projects, for anything at all. And finally, I want to talk about this. This is something very important. It also grants you true power. So what do I mean by true power? We all have power. We all have power. I, you know, politicians, they love power, okay? If you're a politician, you must be wanting, hey, I want more votes, I want more power and things like that. So all of us want power as well. So, and the good thing about it is that open source software grants you this true power you can't get from proprietary software. Proprietary software will never give you this true power. So this power, although they are very simple, they are very powerful. What are the powers I mean? First one would be power to modify. So let's say you have your set of code, you have a set of software. Let's give it a proprietary example. You have a proprietary software. You can't modify the code if you want to make changes to it. Let's say, hey, I want to make some changes. Your boss tells you to make changes to this software. You can't do it in proprietary software. You can't do it. You don't have the power to modify it. Your boss is going to fire you one day if you do that. And the next thing is that it gives you the power to fix. Power to fix is very important. If you're running enterprise software, you're, enter you're running a big company, and then there's the software suddenly stopped working. You want to fix it. In proprietary context, you will need to file a bug report and wait for a few days before they actually entertain your request, and they go and fix it, take, take their own sweet time to fix it. Whereas in open source, you can either file a bug you can you can file a bug report and wait for other people to fix it or you can fix it yourself and make a uh, pull request to to let others have this fix as well so you have the power to fix software which you can't get from proprietary software proprietary don't give you that power it doesn't grant you the three things that i've mentioned earlier on true knowledge true security true power but you might be wanting to switch from proprietary to open source software by now. Maybe you might want to do that by now. But I'm telling you, it's not easy. Common sense tells everyone it's not easy to switch from proprietary to open source. Because people who make proprietary code, they do it on purpose. They make your life difficult. They are not going to make it easy for you to switch to open source software. Never. Never. There's no standardization of data. You can't just transfer. It's not just a one-click migration and you switch over from proprietary to open source. They're going to make you stuck to proprietary software. But I'm telling you that you have a choice. We all have choices in life. We can all make choices. Okay? We can all make choices. So let's say your company wants a chat software for their own comp for themselves. Well, you've got Slack, or you could choose something like Rocket Chat, which is a 
free open source software. It has video, it has audio as well. Really brilliant so open source software, a brilliant Slack alternatives. Back in the days, few years ago, you know, when I started using open source software, it's terrible because a lot of software, they, they, the UI is very challenging and honestly, it kind of suck and I, I don't know how to fix it, okay? I, I don't know how to make pull requests at that time. So back in those days, uh, it was very hard to use open source software. There were no drop-in replacements, you know? The replacement probably suck as well. But right now, you got a lot of developers contributing to open source. You got brilliant, nice rocket chat here. The UI is really brilliant. It's comparable to Slack. You know, when, when you have a choice, I'm telling you that you should choose open source software because of the three things I've mentioned earlier. And most importantly, when you choose open source, you're supporting open source. You're supporting a group of community developers. You're not, su you're not supporting people who just only want to develop proprietary software. You're not supporting people who don't want to share their code. You're supporting people who wants to share the, their code. You're supporting people who wants to make the world a better place. So you're doing an excellent thing if you, when you choose open source software. Okay, and finally, talk, we need to talk about this really important topic right here. Contributing to open source. All right, I know a lot of us here don't have the time, okay? But you know that if you, have, if you use the software, there are some bugs, please file issues. And if you're a designer, you can design graphics, you can contribute graphic designs, you can contribute some parts of your time to open source. Because we, we really need designers, we really need people. If you can speak, please attend to these conferences like Force Asia, go for meetups, talk to people about open source software. All of us here in the room, we all can do our part. Even if it's just a few minutes, just talk to some people, that's contributing to open source. That's contributing to open source. If you are a developer, please, if you have to some, if you have some time, do contribute to open source. And if your company is using open source software, all the more they should, they should contribute to open source software because they themselves are using open source software. You know, we all use open source software on a daily basis and everything, almost everything we use are all based on open source technology. We've got Android phone, we've got iPhones, iPhones, Objective-C, all these, they are all open source code. So yeah, you know, we should all contribute to open source and play our part if we can. And we all can, we all should. So right now, uh, it's gonna be a bit interesting because we got a, I got a quiz. <coughs> I got a quiz for you guys. It's just a single question, but you get to walk away with the Adreno, I think it's an Adreno, uh, Adreno set here, Adreno starter kit. Never been touched, I've never touched it before because I don't do C programming, okay? I suck at C. So I can't really do Adreno. Okay, but uh, if you can answer the question, you get to walk away with this Adriano set. Okay, so just a very interesting story about this Adriano set. I got it for free. Okay, I attended a Microsoft training event. Okay, so they had a lucky draw at the end and then my name was picked. Okay, so no guarantees there wouldn't be any spying software in it. Maybe Microsoft <laughs> might have, you know, they might have planted something inside. I don't know, okay? I don't know what's inside. Okay, but, okay, here's one question. You can use your phone and Google. Prepare to Google, prepare to use DuckDuckGo to search for the answer. Okay, if you, if you raise your hand and I point to you, you answer correctly, I'll give you the Adriano set. It's expensive as well. I got it for free from Microsoft anyway. So here's the question. If you have a computer with no memory and only two register, how do you exchange register A with register B? And all you have are Boolean operators. How do you do that? You can use your phone and search for the answer right now. Anyone? Any takers? Adriano said. 
is, but I've probably made the answer that it speaks to the mob. <laughs> <laughs> I've killed those brain cells along last night. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I, I, all right, all right, but. You don't use exclusive or. Okay, you got to answer. It's an exclusive or uh, exclusive or swap. All right, you can have this Arduino set. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, give a round of applause. <clears throat> All right, great, fantastic. All right, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so this question was a very interesting question brought up by one, uh, I, uh, McAfee, John McAfee. He, uh, yeah, he he showed me this. He showed this question to the public, and I couldn't solve it at all. I couldn't solve it. I was a, I'm a developer, but I can't solve this question at all. I'm actually quite surprised that one of you guys actually know the answer. It was a exclusive or swap. It's really simple. Just saw A, saw B, then saw A again, and you get your answer. All right, so that's it for my end of the talk. Okay, so uh, since I'm representing Fedora as a Fedora ambassador, do follow us on Twitter, Fedora SG, Instagram, Fedora.SG. Okay, so uh, we have a Red Hat booth, we have a Fedora booth downstairs. Okay, and the Red Hatters, they are giving away Raspberry Pi. So, they had a they have a lucky draw same as Microsoft they have lucky draws okay so uh, they had a Raspberry Pi lucky draw maybe your name is on it go check it out go check if you have won a Raspberry Pi so yeah it's downstairs visit us at the booth yeah you can come to the booth as well I I was I've got Fedora DVDs they they've got stickers as well so do drop by the booth downstairs at exhibition hall A if you see something red. That's the Red Hat booth with the fedora there. All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. Hope to, con hope to see you guys contribute more open source. All right, thank you. Okay. Because uh, we've got more time for questions and answers. So, uh, any questions? No questions? So what are your personal plans in open source? All right, so I intend to go towards more towards the Singapore open source community. So there's a lot of people actually in Singapore that are trying to contribute to open source. So a uh, Harish, Harish over there, he wants to, he's pushing for this uh, open source government platform. So I'm trying to help help him develop some of the codes as well so you know I'm using some of my free time as a student to try to develop some software and I'll try to my plan is to go for more meetups as well talk to more people about open source software tell them the real benefits of open source software pretty much that's it for my open source plans Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us run, you know, for instance, Linux, and then the Linux kernel, you have like millions of lines of code in it, and a lot of us, you know, not a lot of us have the technical expertise to even go through all the lines of code. So, you know, if, even if there are security vulnerabilities in there, we might not know them ourselves, and then you know, this a lot of it is based on good faith. Work. So, what would you say about that? Okay, so, you know, the Linux, pro the Linux kernel project is a very big project, so there are people working full time like at working at Google working at Red Hat they are the they are security auditors who look through all these codes on as a full time job so even though there are there might be secure there's no secure software okay definitely there's no secure software one day we find a bug we got to resolve it so you know at the end of the day open source they find a bug, they find a security exploit, they, 
they have to resolve it. Okay, we not all of us here can look. We are we can't look through the entire Linux project kernel. So you know it's based on trust on Red Hat, but you don't place complete trust on just these few companies. Don't just depend on them fully as well. Right? If you want, if you have the free time, you can look through the Linux project to look at the source code. Right? But then again, not all of us have the time, so we gotta place some trust in these big companies who are willing to help out in the open source project since. Okay, but uh, <clears throat> this, is, <coughs> this is a very interesting issue because versus proprietary software, which you don't have the source code, Okay, you don't have a source code, so there's even lesser people with access to the source code. Okay, there might be security issues, pressing security issues on proprietary software that are not being resolved. Okay, I, I know people, they sell, they sell security exploits on certain forums. Okay, they, they do, do do that. Okay, but uh, for open source, if you, if you try to sell that, it's probably gonna get fixed in a few days because there are gonna be so-called open source spies buying these security exploits and then yeah and most importantly open source projects they have security bounties as well so if you're a security researcher you are working as a security researcher you can get paid if you report these security issues in the rightful way all right so these are some of the ways which uh, security is done at open source Oh, by the way, uh, all these slides are done using LibreSoft, uh, LibreOffice. So it's a replacement for PowerPoints, Microsoft PowerPoint. Although the UI is a bit challenging, uh, but it gets the job done. Okay, so uh, any more questions? Okay, so uh, okay, if no questions, uh, another round of applause.